In Business Central, the chart of accounts is the core of all financial process. We're gonna show you this setup from our default. You can find the chart of accounts through finance chart of accounts, or you can click tell me and type chart of accounts. Now, the chart of accounts gives us all of your general ledger in order from balance sheet on top, starting off down to your income, which in this system, I think starts around 6,000. You have uh, the ID, which is your GL code. Some customers will run four digits, five or six digits, which is adjustable. You've got the name, You've got the net change and balance. Now you'll notice in this system, the net change and balance are the same for us because I haven't run a filter on dates. If I was to filter for a one month period with this net change would adjust and the balance would be the balance. You have your income or balance sheet option here. I'm just gonna go into edit mode to show us edit list. And here we can see that it's income or balance related. You've got a account subcategory, which allows us to choose what in the balance sheet this is. Then we have an account type and the account type is super important for as you can see here, I can see that uh, I'm gonna scroll down to an area in inventory. We can see inventory starts at 2100, finishes at 2900. And you can see there's a begin total and an end total. And at the end total, the next column over has a from and to. So 2100 dot dot, 2190, which including the header and the total equals the balance. Okay. I'm going to filter to the, uh, the number and I'm gonna focus on revenue. So I've just used six star, and this gives us our revenue. And in here, in the same example, you can see here, sales, begin total, begin total, and a sales, total sales retail. Now you notice that there's a begin total above this for revenue, and so you're gonna see this total come down here as total revenue at the bottom. And that total, is everything from 6,100 revenue all the way down to the very last end total. Now, if we go into this uh, this GL for sales retail, I'm gonna click on it, and you're gonna see the setups for uh, that are applicable to this particular code. So you've got your code number, we've got our name, which needs to be something that's descriptive, whether it's income, or a balance, what the category of it is being its income, it's a COGS, it's equity expense, liability or asset. The account subcategory of income, as you drill into that, it's gonna give you the option to, to choose and you know this might be income for product sales, this might be um, uh, services. So I'm just gonna click on, um, uh, product. All right. So debit or credit or both, will we permit that? Okay. Do we allow debits only or credits? We've got the account type, which it's a posting group. All right. The totaling doesn't apply because this is, was not a total. Okay. Um, I think some of the things here that are super important that if you want to allow reconciliations on this for bank rec, you would enable this. Are we allowing direct posting? For example, if we don't allow direct posting, it must be posted to through a document. So a document is an invoice, a purchase from a customer, vendor, item, resource transaction through the system. Whether it's blocked or not, and um, yeah, there's, there's a few other things that are important here. This just here is important here for Australia. Um, when you're using the wise tenancy, it gives the ability to show the op opposite signs. So this is an extension that's available. Um, and so uh, with business central revenue is shown as a negative, this swaps it to showing it as a positive. And uh, I won't cover that why that is the case. That's just part of the architecture of BC. 
Um, what we've got here is some setups to do with the posting. You can choose whether you use this or not. If you don't, it's going to carry through from your customer vendor transaction. Okay. But the general posting type of this is sales purchase or settlement. And then what posting groups is it going to use? What's the default into company partner code for this? Um, I think that the next one that's super cool is do we want to apply a deferral template against this? So for example, I've created one here to defer. Anything that's posted to this will automatically defer for a three month period, just like that. Okay, um, other things. You've got consolidation. Uh, if it's applicable, your how you roll up your companies and consolidate your companies is covered here. Um, exchange rate adjustment for reporting. Now, in this GL, I can now go in and see the ledger entries, and it's going to give me the ability to see a bunch of revenue that's going on. And you can see here that there's there's a lot of transactions, but I just want to focus on this document just here. So I'm going to click on the line. I'm going to go here and press filter to this value. And at the same time, I'm going to clear the filter on the GL because it carried over from the card. Here you can see that um, the general ledger entries here all relate to that posting document. So one thing that's important to understand is a document number is binding and it binds all of your transactions together based on this column. So when you've got a purchase document, a uh, sales document, whatever that document is, a production document, it will carry through and give us the ability to actually trace and understand these transactions. So from this line, I'm going to go to entry and I'm going to click find entries. And this is going to show you all of the related records here. So this came from a posted sales invoice. If I want to see that, I can click here and I'm going to see the posted sales invoice. There we go. One line. I can drill in to see the GL entries, the tax entry, customer ledger entry, the detailed customer ledger entry, the value entry, and your sales tax entry. This is all available by drilling in from the general ledger. Some of the other things that are important for a GL is the ability for you against your account to turn around and set dimensions. Dimensions will be covered further in a different video, but this is super important and a nice little trick if you are wanting to always require that a department was selected on this transaction and it was always sales, you could set it here, or you could turn around and mandate that we will not allow posting to this account if a department code is not provided through the sales or purchase document flow. So requiring and maintaining mandate uh, on dimensional integrity is set here on the GL account for every single one of your GLs. And it allows you then to ensure that when you're getting outcomes, reporting outcomes, that they're consistent and they maintain the, the dimensions all the way through.